invites us to be of one heart around this table, putting aside all strife and contention. And when we receive this bread and cup, the Spirit welcomes us all, poor sinners. We should do no less for one another. So in this spirit of forgiveness and of welcome, I want you now to come forward and take your rightful places around this table. Please. Get to the walk now. So it could be that while, if you use a liturgy like this and people are coming forward and there's you've got a couple hundred people in the congregation, you might well want to do that with a hymn. And sometimes somebody might write one or maybe a special hymn which sort of signifies now we're gathering, now communion is happening, now, 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 now. Thank you. And now let us pray together to the God who loves us. Praise, Praise to you, God, God of the glory, for this welcome table set in love for all who long to know you. From the foundation of the world, you desire to share the banquet of life with, with all your creatures. Mindful of our feelings and of your ageless kindness, we ask help for our hearts, that we may grow in love and forbearance each for each. Mindful also of all whose lives are marked by pain and exclusion, we thank you for the joy we know in your household. By our eating and drinking at this table, make us able and eager to welcome every creature as Jesus did, and to witness in word and work to the justice you desire for the world. So we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the heart of love has made us. The hand of love has saved us. The breath of love has changed us. And so with the church in every time and place, with angels who stand in the present scene, and with every creature, great and small, open your lips now. It's great. Holy, holy, holy. No, we could holy, sing this. Right? This would, uh, would be better to sing, heaven. but yeah. we don't know it, right? <laughs> Sovereign of heaven and earth, the cosmos sings your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to us in your name. Hosanna in the highest. Now, this would be the place that we, we actually sort of talking Eucharistic prayer as such. This is the, the, the whole of it has been the Eucharistic prayer, but this really gets down to sort of the great thanksgiving or the remembering part. And this is the place where a lot of ministers and priests, if you haven't already been raising your hands in the traditional posture, this may be a place if you feel comfortable and if your people won't go screaming from the room thinking you've turned into some you know, Catholic. Uh, 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 th this would be, and some people like to really make a huge gesture. Some people are happy with a, a less full gesture. And I even know some people who will simply rest their hands, if, especially if they're reading, rest their hands on the table. So it goes like this. Um, uh, and now, oh God, now, now see you switch here really into a prayer direct to God. Now, O oh God, with grateful joy, we remember Jesus, the greatest of all your gifts to us. We remember his daring love and his open table. He, he calls us friends. friends. We remember that he gave us peace. A peace no one else can give. We remember that he did not leave us bereft. He, he sent, sent us helper, the spirit alive in our hearts. And we remember that even on the night of betrayal and desertion he gathered us. He told us not to be afraid. He gave us a sign of belonging a gift of love that conquers death. He took, he took the bread and gave you thanks. He blessed it, broke it, and shared it, and, and it became for us the bread of life. Now, if we could just take a small parenthesis. <coughs> the options for Protestants here are endless. Right? And a lot of it de depends on your theology, on your congregation's expectations, and on your comfort level. Right? And on your liturgical knowledge and your theological convictions. Right. Here's what some people would have done just then. As you were reading, he took bread and gave you thanks. Would you read that part? Well, you don't, no, don't read it because then you won't be able to look. He took bread, and some of them would go, and he gave you thanks, you know, or they would hold it like this. 
And he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, blah, 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 okay? That's what some people would have done. Other people um, who are uh, perhaps a little bit more liturgically precise and sophisticated will know that there is actually a part of the liturgy and the ancient liturgy where the bread was supposed to be broken and it comes later. And it's called the fraction, the breaking of the bread. And it comes much later. It was usually accompanied by the song, Our New Day, or Lamb of God, You Take Away the World's Sin, Have Mercy on Us. And that was sung as a litany repeatedly until all the bread had been broken. The first break had been made, and then continuous breaks were made while that was sung, and plates were filled. That was the time of the preparation in the Latin West, right? Now, the, the, the criticism that is sometimes made of what I did before, taking the bread, blessing the bread, breaking the bread, offering it to people as the words of institution are read, the criticism some liturgy people make about that is that although the whole of the Mass or the whole of the Eucharistic liturgy is a kind of drama, we really, it gets a little too literal and dramatic to actually try to kind of act out what's happening or what we imagine happened at that supper. And it's much better to, to just let people concentrate on bread and, and, and cup and not be distracted, if you will, with all the activity of the person who suddenly, instead of being like the minister who's one of us, suddenly becomes the Jesus character, you know, <laughs> who is doing what Jesus did. Yeah, the sort of altar Christus, all right? So, um, uh, so there's a criticism that's sometimes made of that by liturgical scholars and purists, that this is a recent innovation that may or may not be helpful especially in denominations that have a kind of low vision of the ministry and of who's presiding at the table. It suddenly elevates you into an actor in a drama. Right? Now, up to you. Because there's an equally wonderful argument to be made, I think, for if it's done unostentatiously, right? we, d we don't want to do, and he took, you know, and he blessed it, you know, like he's making the sign of the cross when he hasn't even gone to the cross yet, you know, and, um, and, and he, and he, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. I've seen this, and you may have seen this. And he gave it to them. You know, look at everybody. <laughs> and he said, you know, this is my... Some people are really into this stuff. Okay, so, remember that you want to make it appealing, and you want to make it alive and warm for people, but you also, I mean, this is, if you ask that. All right, so, all right. No, 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 I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just, I'm just saying you gotta remember what your role is. Your role is not the role of a performer, even though it's a performance. It is a performance, but your role is not to be self-consciously performing. Your role is to get everybody else performing, you know, in a sense, and everybody else united around this. So let's go on. In the same way, after the meal, he thanked you. Now, there's nothing wrong. Abs even if you don't do all the breaking and uh, blessing and passing around, the hand gesture really does help people who are watching, especially if you have a liturgy that doesn't include a lot of participation where you're the only one speaking. It can also be really helpful for people <coughs> who feel connected with what you're saying. If, for example, you were to go like this, he took bread and he gave you thanks. This is all still one loaf. And he gave you thanks and he broke it and blessed it and gave it to his, you know, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body. And when the supper was over, or whatever the words are, he thanked you for the cup filled with wine. I mean, you can touch the things. You can put your hands on them. You can extend your hands. Um, he passed it to his friends, saying, etc., etc., um, uh, <coughs> even to the betrayer and the one who denied him, and it became for us a healing drink. He gave these gifts to us, body and life blood. I lost my place. This is why the little pillow is good. Mm -hmm. Food and drink, his life and ours, joined forever. He said to us, we all say, he said to us, do this and remember me. Now, here comes the famous prayer to the Holy Spirit. Right? This, is, this is where some traditions believe that along with the institution narrative and the, the presence of all the people, that, that whatever 